Being at an Atlantic Fellow changed me a lot, actually. First, I think the biggest change for me was my ambition. All the idea of Atlantic is to create a network of people focusing in social equity, people focusing in brain and mental health. You don't see this in fellowships where you get so many different people from so many different walks of life working together, living together, and, and making a difference together. Our didactics really allow us to go in depth into a, a subject and, and do some background reading and individual work, but also have a group discussion that happens between the UCSF and the Trinity College Dublin campus, which really allows us to feel almost like we're in the same classroom because we see them sitting across the table on a screen from us. And so for that particular didactic, I really wanted to introduce how culture shapes the way we think and not just culture, but also our structural circumstances, whether it's politics or the the systems we're in are structural barriers like poverty or economics and gender and things like that. There really isn't such a thing as a typical day. Um, the nearest we get are Tuesdays and Wednesdays at the moment when we do lecture series where we meet the people in San Francisco online and we do an exchange with them which are really fascinating but generally there is no typical day. There's a, an orientation process, there's a settling in period, and then there's driving the project that you're trying to do and building a tailored program around yourself. Certainly um, an education on, in science has been huge. To learn about these important areas from people at the top of the field has been invaluable. And it enables me to go out into the world and it enables me to be a better leader. That's really the most powerful thing that you could give me as someone who's trying to build something. A theme here is empowerment, that we're given the tools to go forward on our own. I think it has a lot to do with our way of thinking. It's changing, it's becoming broader, both scientifically and geographically. Before uh, being part of the GBHI, I had a very narrow uh, research focus, with focus on language processing and people with uh, language impairments. But applying for the GBHI gives you the possibility to widen your interests so you can learn about policy, you can learn about advocacy, health economics, you can learn about leadership, and you can bring all of this knowledge to your own expertise, and then you have a much wider uh, perspective on things, which is great. I guess one of the nicest parts of the programme so far was at the conference in Barcelona. And that was the first time that all of the fellows were in the same room. And it really just captured the diversity and the different perspectives of all the different groups and all the different cultures. And we did a really nice piece of leadership training there. And you really felt that you were part of this bigger movement and this bigger community and this bigger team. The most interesting part for me was the day of the conference where the GBHI fellows provided the different sessions and this was an amazing day with a lot of emotions and sharing and there was a real commitment of very different people from different backgrounds to fight against the same thing and yeah, it was a beautiful moment, very beautiful. I suppose for the first time I saw in action GBHI's vision and I saw that through the other Atlantic Fellows as they spoke about their work, as they showed all the varied spaces and places that they wanted to make change in and how they wanted to make change. I think GBHI is really built on human capital, on the idea that we are better together because we mix different backgrounds, different um, cultures, different values. I think I'm much more aware of the power of the narrative. We talk a lot about how we talk about dementia and putting dementia in a more positive context rather than talking about it as a problem, talk about it as opportunities. What can we do for these people and their carers rather than how much of a burden are they to society? I believe uh, that equity in uh, brain health is uh, to afford and to uh, serve uh, the same opportunity to each people uh, suffering from dementia to uh, access the same opportunities and same resources regardless his cultural, his racial, his previous country to gain the, uh, the, the treatment and diagnostic tools uh, the same uh, as any 
people with dementia all over the world. For me, I think courage is huge as a leader, and I think that that's really what the Global Brain Health Institute is pushing us to be as leaders. I think as a leader, you have to be able to take on the challenges that others might be afraid to take on. The aspects that are critical for creating a better society. You cannot lead if uh, you cannot care for other people. It's a community of uh, extraordinarily nice people who are very generous uh, with their time and their energies and are also like hecka smart, focused, you know, focused on doing incredibly important things like going back to their country that they came from and establishing a great system for diagnosing and treating people who have dementia, for example, where such a system does not exist. That's something that can change an entire society.